Hello again. We are Southeastern 14. I'm Chris Lee, joined by Max Barr and Invisi Blake. If you're just <laughs> listening to this, you're not going to see what's going on here, but we're off to just a bang up start already for our Monday morning. Before we get into power rankings, we're going to remind you Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs. They sponsor this video. Uh, you can get your pro and college hoops. Wagering needs met with them throughout the year with up to the minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs of in game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or mobile devices. Head to Bet Online today, become part of the team. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. Blake Lovell, my man. What, what what does it take to get your internet fixed? Let me just tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> if your team is pissing me off right now, you're going to hear about it in this power rankings because I'm not playing games with anybody at this point. All right. If you don't want your team to be lower in the power rankings, win some games. That's all I got to <laughs> say. <laughs> Let's get going. All right. Number 14, the Vanderbilt yeah. Commodores, right? No, that's that's not what we <laughs> oh. did. Um, two, two of us believe that results actually matter, that they play the games for reason. So um, <laughs> we have Missouri at 14 by virtue of Missouri being 0 for the SEC, Vanderbilt having won two wins. And I know we just gave away 13, but I don't think that shocked anybody. Now, to be fair, Ken Palm does have Missouri being the better team, even in conference play which is how bad Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is number 14 in offensive and adjusted defensive efficiency in Ken Bomb in league games, but it did win two games. That matters. What are we even talking about? Let's get on to number 12. <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> Blake, what do you have to say about the Georgia Bulldogs? I'll tell you what I got to say about the Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> They're struggling these days. They got one win since January 24th, and that came against Vanderbilt. They got blown out at home by Auburn, which we thought could be closer than that. It was not. And, yeah, I don't have a lot to add. I just, I've said it before with Georgia. I don't have much to add. As long as they're not the home for the Internet provider that's currently servicing my particular place, then I have nothing bad to say about Georgia except that they're just not winning enough games to move up the power rankings. Chris, we were all over this game. We really thought we were going to see something here from from Georgia at home and finally yes, break did. through. And uh, we, uh, well, we 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 died on that throne there. That didn't even lead lead the whole game. So I really thought that if there was going to be a a chance that Georgia can really play spoiler and make a little bit of a push, it was it was here at home against Auburn. But that week off really did did some damage for Auburn and. Georgia just could not take advantage of the opportunity. They haven't been able to at home all year. That's what now, one, two, three, four straight home losses. So not going to get it done. Georgia needs a closer. I mean, th this team is right there with everybody. Right, was there with Auburn. Like the final score was a middle, little misleading. Like eight minutes left, Georgia was within striking distance. Or, or so, I don't remember the exact mark, but then you look up and you leave the room and they're down 20 points. Yep. I mean, everybody does need a blue cane, but what happens when... Everybody doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm that's, what that's what everybody needs, too. You know what else they need? Functioning internet is what everybody else needs. You said you said the internet service provider that serves you. I, I was going to say may not serve you because you're being ignored right now. <clears throat> Are we going to out, we out your company? No, I'm not going to do that because I want to talk about the okay. must bus. The Arkansas Razorbacks at number 11. Number one in your hearts, number 11 in the power rankings this week. The must bus is back on the road. Maybe still using regular unleaded, not not premium unleaded yet. We, we apparently, apparently they've been out of that for months, but they're at least back on the road. The, the bus is moving now, and they've won two in a row. That's what we like to call a streak. That's the first time we've had a winning streak since December. So give them some props that – they're at least moving in the right direction. Battle is battling for the Player of the Week award. 
He's my player of the week in the SEC. 42-point performance that hasn't been rivaled since Max Barr was playing on the playground back in the day, putting up 42 left and right. What else do you say about this Arkansas team? Back-to-back wins. The Hogs have won five conference games now. Chance to finish strong here with Vanderbilt, LSU at home. Oh, yeah, then they got to go to Kentucky and Alabama. But nonetheless, Vanderbilt and LSU at home. So they got a chance to pick up a couple more wins. So maybe, just maybe, this team can play the spoiler role here in the final stretch run. Well, also they're playing to get out of that first game in the SEC tournament. They just moved up to the 11 seed now. So they're they're playing for a lot. And, and, and those paths in the SEC tournament, they are just – they are insanely different by what – what seed you get you might run you might have to run into Kentucky and Florida or you're just playing South Carolina it, it's, a, it's a huge difference with the, with the seeding so two games against Vandy and LSU and then spoiler maybe against Kentucky and Alabama they they all of a sudden have a lot to play for uh when it didn't look so good in January mid-January I'm suddenly very intrigued by Arkansas no, it's interesting. Arkansas has, has dug itself too big of a hole to make a run at an at-large, probably even an NIT. But I don't know that I would want this team on a Thursday game scenario in Nashville, You know, especially if you're a, an Ole Miss or somebody like that that's trying to, to get in the tournament. I, I think this team, I would not put any amount of money on it, but they've got a chance to to make a run and maybe get to the weekend. I mean, you've got two guys that can give you 30, 35 points on a given night in battle and market. What's the status of Trevon Brazil or, or Max Barr? The same as it's been the past two weeks. Okay. Just another, just more. You look it up, you're just going to get more day-to-day. He's progressing. That's all you're going to find. Yeah. yeah, I would, I would love to have this team – hit the reset and start a, a new season and see where it could have gone. But that's not how it works. So we'll we'll keep an eye going forward. Number 10 LSU, which beat Kentucky and then just got run out of its own gym in a hangover game by Mississippi State. Invisible Lake, what have we got on the Tigers? You're really having fun with this, aren't you? Oh, tons. <laughs> The best 14 and 13 team in America, the LSU Tigers. Um, Yeah, yeah, that was not the result we expected with the blowout loss at home to Mississippi State, who had been terrible on the road. But nonetheless, there's still a chance for LSU to finish strong with Georgia, Vanderbilt, Arkansas, Missouri. By the way, those four teams already mentioned here in the power rankings. Um, Those are the last four games. They're going to play the bottom four teams in our power rankings to finish the season. So, uh, LSU, surprisingly, I believe, if I did the tiebreaker right, which, who knows, the internet could have got involved in that one, too, with math. But, you know, I think LSU would be the number eight seed right now, mm-hmm. Max. Is that right? In the SEC I think so, too. At the moment. So, uh, based on the three-way tiebreaker with Ole Miss and Texas A&M, I think that's right. So, that's interesting, at least to note. And if they were to finish strong, maybe win four in a row, go three and one, something like that. Who knows where LSU finishes uh, in the ranking? So, Brutal hangover effect, which I, I did bring up. I did not think it would be to this extent losing by 20. Um, but I think LSU is going to be okay, and they'll probably win quite a few games here down the stretch. Yep, I agree. I don't have too much to add. I'm not drawing too much of a negative takeaway from that Mississippi State game. Um, you could kind of see the emotional letdown coming with with how uh, just how emotional that Kentucky win uh, was by one point. Um, so – and you know, in the fashion it happened, with I mean, that might be the that might be one of the craziest plays of the entire season, you know. And we and, and they were coming off of it, so you could see it coming. I didn't think it was going to be brutal, that you know, as brutal as it was. But I think they're probably going to win three out of their last games and and be in pretty good position in the SEC tournament. So I'm not I'm not hopping off the LSU train. We were really hyping them up the past few weeks, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna hold firm on them. I really like them still. You're not hopping off the LSU train, but Max Barr got a question for you. Number nine, Ole Miss. Mm. Are you are you hopping off the Rebels? I got to be honest. It's not looking good. Losers of five of the last six, and that only that only win is by three points at home 
against our number 14 team. So it's not looking too good. No, um, they do have some opportunities here down the stretch, the last four games to pick up some quality wins. They catch both Alabama and A&M at home, but two resume building wins. But Chris, I might be, I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure that loss, basically just the two losses last week bumped Ole Miss out of bracketology, um, yeah. which is, it was a back against the wall week. And, um, it, it was just, it's a tough time to, to be dropping games right now. I agree. <laughs> Who's number eight? I know who number eight is. I just want to see Blake roll this out. Well, somehow Texas a and number eight. And I'm curious where you guys voted this team. I had a and eight. I will I will give I you how I size this up. I think you've got two teams at the bottom, clearly. Vanderbilt, Missouri. I think that teams 10, 11, and 12 can go in some order. We got those right, in my opinion. And I think Ole Miss and AM are eight, nine in some reason. And there's a clear top seven. It's just the order. So I don't think there's a whole lot to argue about here. I was just curious more than anything. I mean, I, that's all. Just, I, I just say it. Well, no, I mean, I, I thought that – I don't know. I mean, I think Ole Miss and A&M, there's just not a lot that separates them, maybe from a bracketology right. standpoint, but I just don't – I mean, my goodness. A&M got, just got beat by 35, 25, lost home game to Arkansas, lost at Vanderbilt. Meanwhile, I know Ole Miss has been struggling, but, I mean, at least they beat Missouri, I guess, in there. They didn't get blown out to the extent that A&M did, and they still got some good wins, but I don't know. We're We're splitting hairs here. Yeah. These two teams are struggling kind of like something else. But I think the, the 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 main takeaway here is that these are two teams that we have both at times had top six in our power rankings, but are both on probably very similar slides right now. I think just kind of group I'm not it's not a huge one is eight and one is nine kind of grouping them together in my head. Yeah. I flip a coin yeah I, I think i think we got the right team in there because a and m did win some bigger out of conference games whereas old miss was playing yep a very weak point. schedule and, and look it did win them all but the computers all like a and m better i think it's a team that's a little got computers. a little bigger ups <laughs> get those computers out of here clearly they don't know what they're doing i think it's got a team with a little more upside as it proved in winning at tennessee or not at Tennessee in well, college station. Upside in Tennessee. What I saw, <laughs> and then 30, we saw what happened. Thirty-five point loss. On hey, Saturday. look, <laughs> nobody's in a good place here with eight and nine. But I'll tell you who is in a good place. Our number seventeen, which played a, a tough part of the schedule early as it did last year in, in conference, and now we have Mississippi State ripping through the soft underbelly of its SEC schedule. Blake Lovell, what do you have to say for the Bulldogs? I mean, I was a little harsh on Texas A&M. They, they still got some really good players on that team. And, again, they got 12 losses here, uh, and they're going to need to do something about that. But they're going to need to do what Mississippi State has done mm -hmm. because they need to pull off the Mississippi State approach of just going out and winning games. That's what you got to do. You just got to win games. That's what it comes down to these days. Five in a row for the Bulldogs. And, yeah, I mean, we kind of said it. After they lost the Alabama game, great opportunity to turn the tables here, get back on the right track. Now they're two games above 500 in the SEC. Now they get four huge games to finish the season. No bad loss opportunities anywhere on the board for the Bulldogs. No chance for the dump at the hump, as our friend Donovan would like to say. Uh, the Bulldogs are feeling pretty good about themselves, and finally they feel pretty good about themselves on the road. I know they beat Missouri by 24 couple weeks ago, but winning at LSU the way they did was the mm -hmm. most impressive road effort they've had all season. If they can carry that forward into a big home game against Kentucky on Tuesday, two big road games at Auburn and A&M, and then another big home game against South Carolina, I think Mississippi State's a team that can raise its profile the most heading into uh, the NCAA tournament because they've got yeah. four great, great opportunities. If they were to finish 3-1, and one, something like that here, hey, Look out. Six the seed, Bulldogs five seed. Yeah. are feeling really good about their seeding. So 
this they're listen you know what i'm gonna say because i've been talking about them before the show and previous shows i think this team is a, just a different element here with sean murphy at the four i mean and, and he has not been talked about it but you go through their this win streak uh the last game that mississippi state lost was the last game Kashawn Murphy didn't play in. Like it was that Alabama. Now, I don't know if he would have made a difference in the outcome. Alabama put up 99, but he played 15 minutes, 18, 20, 22, 25 minutes. He just – he's playing big, big minutes for them, um, and it kind of allows them to do a little bit more. It doesn't lock Cam Matthews into that power forward role for 35 minutes. They, they have a little bit more flexibility now. Uh, can play more games with Tolu and, and Kashawn Murphy on the floor at the same time. Jimmy Bell, I just – I'm liking it. I'm really liking it. And we said, we said after that Alabama game, we said this this team can go on a run. Look at how the schedule sets up. And they just took care of business, and now they put themselves, like Blake, you said, in a perfect position where even if you drop a game, no one's going to knock you for it because they're all quality opponents. I think you guys left out the most important ingredient, and that's What's that? Josh Hubbard, who got 33 mm. points, I think, Saturday. Look, I think this team ceiling is probably a sweet 16, but it can get there. If you get a couple of games like that out of Hubbard, uh, this team defends well enough, does other things well enough that that it can get there. So I think this team is playing its best ball at the right time. Number six, who we got, Blake Lovell? Well, if I can find it, I'll tell you. <laughs> South Carolina is number six, which I mean – Come on now, folks. South Carolina at number six, probably by virtue of the two people you see on your screen there. You don't know why my camera's not on. This is why right here. I don't want to be seen. You voted South Carolina six. I don't. Yeah, I did. Thank you. Um, (laughs) So the Gamecocks got the win uh, over Ole Miss on the road. And at least one of us was fully bought in on that okay i was i was bought in on the gamecocks going on the road and beating the rebels you two were not but we all seem to agree that south carolina is here at number six in our power rankings i was going to get to that max you just beat me to the punch there so, um but still the gamecocks i think that was as we said an important win we said it in the reaction show on saturday a huge bounce back win after you know their most brutal week of the season losing by 40, then losing by one. Um, and now, again, there is someone else that has a pretty tough schedule the rest of the way. But great that. opportunities across the board for Father Lamont Paris and the Gamecocks as they go to A&M, uh, which I'm sure will be pretty. They host Florida, they host Tennessee, and then they're at Mississippi State. So two big home opportunities. They've already beaten Tennessee. Um, you know, Florida, that's an interesting game that we haven't seen yet this season. And then the two road games will be tough, but I think the styles that those teams play, as I've said before, they're very winnable for South Carolina. So Gamecocks, another team that could really raise its profile here to finish the season. Um, And, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity on the board, and they've set themselves in a great position doing all the work up front. And now, you know, seeding matters, but you're kind of – you know you're locked to make the tournament and got some good opportunities available to boost your resume a bit here. How valuable, real quick, Chris, how valuable is a guy like Zachary Davis where we see another game here where Studi, he just, he's been banged up. You know, I think he, uh, I think this time it was an ankle sprain uh, in practice that kept him out of this last game. But Zachary Davis steps right in, uh, plays a full 30 plus minutes, 14 points. I think about like a month and a half, maybe a month ago, I said on a video, Talon Cooper's this team's, one of the team's best defenders perimeter defenders i was wrong i think it's zachary davis zachary davis out on the perimeter is a very good defender um so they've got depth and it keeps showing up and uh yeah i mean hey that's one thing that they needed to do coming off of that week off their last road game they get drilled by 40 it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth so it's a a huge momentum booster going forward to not only get a a bounce back win but to have it be on the road uh big for this team yeah, we did our thing Friday or Saturday night, our reaction video. And, and as soon as I got off the video, there's always that nagging thing of like, there was something I meant to mention and I didn't. And it was South Carolina because we didn't spend a lot of time on the yeah. Gamecocks with some of the the wild other games that were out there. But 
Lamont Paris, I didn't hear the whole thing, but he kind of hit on the what I was thinking about them. Is like you can say all this, but th- these are kids that play, and, and and confidence is a hard thing to get back. This team took a, you know, a beating at all. Oh, yeah. And this is the team that people had picked 14th. I think still based on raw talent, it's not a top half of the league team, I don't think. But Lamont Paris has gotten him there. Right. There was every opportunity for South Carolina to fold. Instead, it went out and it did what it has done at its best, which is really lock you down on the perimeter and limit your three-point shooting. Ole Miss, from memory, I think was 3 of 16. Ole Miss, a very efficient three-point shooting team. And – not only did South Carolina stop the Rebels from doing what they do best, but they did it in in Oxford, a place where not a lot of people have won this year. So hats off to Carolina. I think I shortchanged them on our Saturday night show. Didn't really mean to. There was just a lot going on. And so I, I think seeing that response in somebody else's building, the way that Carolina did it, and I'm, I'm guessing they were really frustrating Ole Miss based on – the, the Allen Flanagan elbow that we saw. So, anyway, hats off to the Gamecocks. Firmly back in position. Not that they ever lost it, but but firmly in position to, to win another game or two and, and remove any doubt about an NCAA tournament appearance. And I think we're getting very close there. Number five, Blake Lovell. Boy. Boy, boy, boy. Do I have a bone to pick with you two? <sighs> The Kentucky Wildcats at number five. Now, this is a power ranking, all about power. The, what I saw from Kentucky on Saturday, they're better number five. So I voted them higher than number five, just for the record. But um, as we said, we mentioned the reaction video. Thousands of you have seen that. I mean, here's the deal. If Kentucky looks like that. They play like that. They get that Justin Edwards. They get Big Z back in the fold. They get everybody moving and grooving the way they were doing on Saturday. The Cats aren't going to be number five for long here. Um, They're going to be moving up the board very quickly, and they also have a very interesting schedule to finish things off. Two very winnable home games against Arkansas Vanderbilt at Mississippi State, at Tennessee. Two huge road games for the Cats. They play like that. They're winning at least one of those road games. Um so, yeah, I mean, I I know we're going to talk about the full body of work and all this other stuff, but sure, maybe I overreacted a bit to Kentucky whooping up on the number one team in the power rankings last week. Um, but who cares? I love to overreact. Give me the cats. Higher than number five. You two don't agree. I don't think there's much separating it. I think it's I think it starts to really start to get tight now. And we just this past week is very hard to to rank because we saw a lot of the top teams go one and one um, or only play one game. Uh, Did Kentucky look like world beaters on Saturday? Yes. Did they lose to LSU on Wednesday? Yes. It's the same week. So I don't know. which. Did they lose a game last week? Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. I forgot they lost to LSU. They lost to LSU. Oh, that's right. I forgot. And – I mean, I'm not going to overreact too much to either of them. I'm not going to say they're terrible for losing to LSU. I'm not going to say they're world beaters for beating Alabama at home. I mean, this is also an Alabama team, just for context. They got blown by 20 at Auburn and blown by 20 at Tennessee. So it's not like this is has never happened before. It's, this is the third time it's happened this year. So is there a huge difference between 5, 4, 3, 2, whatever? No, I don't think so. But – I don't think there there is – I think there's two sides to the argument because they did lose to LSU last week still. It, Chris, I know you're chomping at the bit here. Oh, I'm sure. I'm what sure. What do you got? Here it comes. Well, gentlemen. Defensive efficiency. Guarantee. That's, that's the only response ever. I don't have time to watch movies anymore because we're in the oh, middle of of, oh of – Here comes the story. Of – basketball and baseball and god knows what happens from day to day in football but did you guys ever see the movie memento <sighs> that's a crazy movie probably probably a top 10 chris lee movie memento and in it guy pierce's character i think his name is leonard um 
has a has a memory problem. He can only remember what happened recently. He cannot mm-hmm. remember what happened more than a few minutes oh, ago. Here we go. And there's a quote in here, and he says, I have to believe in a world outside my own mind. <clears throat> Blake Lovell has to, to believe oh. in a world of, I, I don't know what, because first of all, oh, Blake, Blake, has, Blake only has short-term memory. He doesn't remember what happened last week or two weeks ago where Kentucky hmm. lost to a Gonzaga team that was nowhere really near the bubble at that point. Hmm. Um, Blake, Blake forgets that defense counts in this game. Oh. I think he just thinks, you know, if you score 200 points, maybe the other team would just forfeit a possession or two. All right, it's time. Oh! Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. We did. Let's go. Come on, oh. keep going. Keep going. Look, I have not forgotten what Kentucky just did. I have not. When Keep the going. cats show up, they are they are awesome, but they don't always show up, and there are some issues there. And we we will see how that re- look. If 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 two weeks from now they are running the table with with everything and and beating everybody into oblivion the way they did to Alabama, then then that's that's a different story. Yeah, but but I I th- this short term memory problem our man Blake has is a little troubling. But can I ask you a question, realistically, a real question here, okay? We are doing a power ranking, right? As of today, we call them the February 26 power rankings, correct? How silly is it to hold something that a team did back in November or December against them? Oh, Lord. Was the Gazaga game in November or December, or was that two weeks ago? Come on. I'm talking about any any games, not even, I'm not not even talking about Kentucky. I'm asking a general (sighs) question here. A general question. Judge like, you, take Kentucky you out of the equation. Here. Take it, okay, take Kentucky out of the equation. I'm asking a question. Because like we all do power rankings differently. We say that every week. I'm just asking. How do you how do you, you how do you view the power ranking formula here? Is it about who you're taking on a neutral court today? Is it about what a team did back in November or December? Like what? What's what's the strongest thing that you're? Well, I, never mind. I, we know it's defensive efficiency. But outside of defensive efficiency, what's the strongest thing you use to determine how good a team is today on a power ranking that's for February twenty sixth? I'd say I'm on a neutral a question. court. I'm not. This is not being sarcastic. I'm just asking. On a neutral court, who would be favored is is where I split a lot of the hairs. Okay. Well, what about who when you're picking between two teams and we're we're trying to decide between four and five? What about will one team beat the other on their floor within our our recent memory? Does that okay. matter? Will the same or, team beat the other team on their floor too? What's the difference? That was further back. No, oh, no. Oh. Okay. What's so that's argument? my question. So Okay. <laughs> Here's another reason why I held back with Kentucky though, also. And, and I, it's probably cheating of me to do this in a power ranking. It's probably cheating. But I also look at the next game that they play, see how the how everything sets up. And barring Vegas doing something really unexpected, Kentucky's going to be the underdog here at Mississippi State. So I didn't want to come on here and sing the praises for Kentucky left and right, and then they go and lose on Tuesday, and I look like an idiot. So. Well, come on, Max. We did that with Alabama. Let's let's not kid ourselves. You and I do that every week with our power. Rankings. I know. I'm trying to stop doing that every week. Okay, you're stopping. Okay. <laughs> Might be a little bit late for that, though. Yeah, we, we're a little too late in the party for that. So, all right, Chris. I know you got one more shot to take at Kentucky. Please continue. I'm not taking shots at Kentucky. I'm just saying we got a lot of really good teams, and you got to decide something. I, Based I decided on what's in front what of I you. saw on Saturday that Kentucky could beat anybody and everybody. I didn't move it on up. One move it on up. What I do moved, we got? I moved him ahead of the number four team. I did. So, which number is number four? Bang, Max. We were having the discussion pre-show. When when's the last time Florida took a lopsided loss to anybody, anywhere, anytime? It was about a month and a half ago, Jan- mid January the sixteenth at Tennessee. That was the last. The, the only two losses they've had since then was a one point loss at A and M and an overtime loss at Alabama. I'll tell you what, I was. You want to know why Kentucky's at five and why Kentucky's not top four? It's because of me right here because I voted Florida number two 
in this week's oh, boy. power rankings. Look at that. Number two. You wanna you just wanna look at nice. you wanna you wanna you wanna be a recency bias? Here I am buying into some recency bias. All right. Blake always says that we like to watch a team beat Vanderbilt and then overreact on them. That's not what I'm over that's not what I'm overreacting to. You okay? absolutely are just using the no, I'm just kidding. That is not what I'm overreacting to. <laughs> all right. This team, this team was up by nine at Alabama with six minutes left. Lost in overtime. A basket go a whistle blows the other way. Either way, they have a they have the only win in, in Coleman this year. That's got to count for something. Uh, they only lose to Texas A&M by one on the road. Beat Kentucky at Kentucky. Beat Mississippi State at home. Every time they've had a tough game here over the past six, seven weeks, they've taken care of business. And if you look at Bart Torvik, I've been uh, pulling a lot from this lately. You filter Torvik for the last four weeks. So it's not just like, a oh, they've been hot for two weeks. The last month of games, this is – seven or eight games for a team, depending on if they had a buy. Florida's the 12th ranked team in the country. They're, that's a large sample size. So I'm all bought in, probably too bought in to this Florida team. But I, I genuinely think you put Florida on a neutral court against Alabama right now with the way that Florida plays inside and what they did at Alabama, I think you might get Florida minus two or something like that. Uh, this team is is right up there in the upper echelon. I bought in this week, and it kind of it skewed the composite rankings a little bit. But I'm all in on Florida, making my claim. Number three. Well, hold on. Oh, do you have anything to add, Mr. Gator? I think they're very good. I've been calling this for a while. Yeah. They're they're in the family of three teams that that are all the same team with different variations, and we rank this team right in the middle of those three. All right, I love how you guys just make me the antagonist sometimes, as if I just hate all these teams. I hate all these teams like this. Like you just, you really turn it against me. We Florida we Gators. made him the antagonist, as if he doesn't just no, do I would this on his it. own. I would never, never play that character what? on my own. Um, no. It's you guys just making me the look. You antagonized me to the point to where my internet decided to come back just so I can defend myself here. So, um, the Florida Gators, they're riding high. They're chomping. Yeah, they're they're really good. And I mean, again, that that Alabama game, I said I thought they had, had that thing won. And um, you're not going to be upset about an overtime loss. Well, I mean, you probably will, given the way it played out, but. Again, that's not one that's going to hurt you. And as always, I mean, it's just, yeah, Florida's got the guards. Their front court, we talked about that, Max. The development of the front court has just been something else. And so we have our fun here. But the Gators are in a good spot. And as Chris says, he likes his teams to play defense. So, all right, on to the next one. The Gators are playing better defense. I, I, I truly mean that, aren't they? Like, they're they're playing much better on the defensive end, I think. They are. So, um, so that's been a, a big help too. It's the teams that are getting better defensively, really helping them. So, all right, on to number three, Tennessee. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alabama. None of us voted <laughs> Tennessee at number three defense. this week. I promise. Blake. Oh, I guess you're going to let me have the floor. On yeah, this one, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, we okay. are. Oh yeah. Alabama. Oh, yeah, because I'm the only person that voted him number one last week. Right, Max Barr? I'm the only person that voted Alabama number one. I don't remember. We got to come up with something. We got the South e Southeastern 14 kiss of death. We got to come up with, like, the ranking the ranking ruin or so, I don't know, something. Like, anytime There's something there, though. Max and I vote someone number one, they're going to lose a game. Yep. You know, just like anytime someone beats Vanderbilt, you know, you guys crown them, they wind up yep. losing a game. So, yeah, there's, there's something to this, but um, – yeah, unfortunately, the tide dropped back this week um, by virtue of some people on here voting him at number three. Not everybody. Some people did. Um, yeah, that's all I got. They're number three. Chris is going to sit back and gloat and talk about defensive efficiency, and I get it. So, whatever. I don't even care at this point. I don't even care. I'm out of here. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Adios. 
Listen, one thing we got to remember, guys, is they didn't have Latrell Wright sell these past yeah. two games. No, they didn't. And I think, Blake, I think it was you that said it, maybe in our live. Um, but didn't you mention something about Oates saying Wright sell was his, was one of the best shooters he's ever coached? Yeah. Was that we you? Said that, I think, yeah, we said that in the pregame, I think, yeah. Pregame, yep. Um, so, I mean, that's got to hold some sort of significance. I don't know if the way – with the way Kentucky played, I don't, I don't know if they were, they had a chance in that one. I mean, but uh, right cell being out definitely does. It just it puts more of the offensive pressure on Sears Estrada and Griffin to to kind of make everything happen. Um, it just lessens the margin of error for a team that already kind of struggles with turnovers. So, just it, I think there's some significance to that. You can't just say that you know right cell didn't make a difference. Um, but they do have a nice little, I don't know if you want to say, you know how we've been saying with these teams that they can drop a game and it, and it won't really affect them? They they get, a, they get a road game at Florida in that revenge game. And if they drop that, I don't think it really affects them, though. But they get Tennessee at home Saturday. And I, that's, I, I know Chris has had that one circled for a while now. So Alabama's got a, got a rebound here and get right so healthy, but they've got a lot of opportunity coming up. Like, as much fun as I make of Alabama's defense and as much as Nate Oates just lit his guys on fire with that comment, not undeservedly so, by the way, it, <laughs> there is maybe such thing as a team that can can just outscore everybody, and if there is, that's hmm. the team. I, I think they need to I, – I don't believe in the consistency because we've seen it play out time and time again. And when they go against the, the cream of the crop – uh, it usually does not end well, but you have to respect what they were doing on that end, but they got slaughtered at their own game in Lexington Saturday. All right, there's a commonality in teams two and one. I, I agree with our composite. At number two, we have the Auburn Tigers. Commonality between teams number one and number two, and right now if you're following, you figure out who's number one. It's that they're both really good on both ends of the four. And uh, – one, one is inconsistent, one is not, and that is, I think, how we, in one form or fashion, differentiated between these two. Blake, you want to go first? You can go first. I Yeah, every time I ask that, he just throws it back at me. Yeah, Chris, I, I was seeing the same thing when I was doing my rankings, and it's tough to kind of separate these top teams. Just kind of the – this is where I kind of leaned into, Blake, you were asking where how do we – how do we weigh and rank our power rankings? This is, I kind of leaned into the computers for these, for these ones. It just, I know that they dropped the home game last Saturday. Um, the, you know, probably the biggest stinker of the year, just in terms of how amazing that Auburn has looked at home, but they did have the uh, come off that midweek off that we've been talking about. There's just been near undefeated uh, this year and, and, and beat a, a Georgia team that we thought was in a good spot by 20. So if there was a response you wanted to see from Auburn, uh, especially with Aiden Holloway starting to pack a punch from the perimeter, if he can start to add that element to this Auburn offense, that's already potent. Um, I, I I think that's a, that's just a, it's an added piece an added element to this offense that could take him to a new level. Um, but they looked good without Jalen Williams. I was really worried about that. And Chad Baker, Mazzara, Chaney Johnson, we saw the depth step up. Yeah, I mean, I think Max and I just get bored sometimes. Like, we're just like, you know what? All season long, the story's been the same. Alabama and – or, excuse me, Auburn and Tennessee have been the two most complete teams in the SEC. But, you know, sometimes we just get bored, Max. We just like, eh, you know, let's rank this team higher this week, this team higher this week. So I did with Florida. You know, why not, right? Like, come on, we were trying to make this interesting, make this entertaining. These power rankings mean nothing. Uh, we appreciate <laughs> you watching. Um but yeah, like it's been the same story. Like these are these have been the two most complete teams in the SEC all season long. Um, it, it really has never changed, right? I mean, even the teams that have made their runs, again, Alabama, I, I joke, but yes, they have defensive issues. South Carolina, we said, can have offensive issues at times. Um, Kentucky obviously has had defensive issues at times. Florida has had defensive issues at times. Mississippi State's had offensive issues. Like so. It's the same thing, right? Like, these two teams, though, I mean, it's, yeah, like, they've been the most complete teams in terms of, you know, the 
whatever, top 20, Ken Palm this, that. Like, they've just always kind of been there. And the only thing we've picked Auburn apart for is the three-point shooting and really nothing else. So, yeah, the Tigers back up to number two here. I, I think, yeah, they've they've been in the top three for a long time now. Um, but, yeah, biggest game of the season. Coming up on Wednesday between our top two teams, the Auburn Tigers and the number one just as we've all voted them here all season long, the Tennessee Volunteers at number one in our power rankings this week. Chris, I, 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 I kind of want you to go first because you, you kind of nailed this last week. I oh, have a, a good friend who's told me that when, when I die, I want them to oh, write God. on my tombstone, I was oh. consistent. Oh, if you oh buried God. Tennessee today, you could write on their tombstone. Tennessee, hey, you was are consistent. morbid. What was the other thing, the thing you said? I'm not what trying to kill Tennessee. I'm just telling you. That what was something about the well? Was here, it the guys? well last week, Max? Something about somebody falling in a well last week, and now this guy's talking about tombstones and all this other stuff. Chris, you got to get out more, man. I can't open can't open the windows. Too. Like, come on, man. <laughs> man. You never know what you're gonna get. But you, you do know what you're gonna get with uh you beat me to it, Chris. Yeah. Uh I don't know what else to say other than are you kidding me with with that game against Texas A and M? I actually I did a write up on this game and and I really I I did a lot of research into that matchup and I was like, man. With how veteran Texas A&M is, I mean, they play senior, 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 junior, junior. Uh, with a back against the wall, I mean, they're going to scrap. You know, this is going to be a close game. I knew it was at, you know, the Food Fight Arena, but I still was like, this is going to be a close game with with how uh, Tennessee doesn't really like to play these physical teams. <sighs> what a blowout. Zakai Ziegler, 14 assists, zero turnovers is crazy numbers, but – just overall looking at the past few weeks, they haven't really played the, the upper echelon of the SEC, but they haven't, other than that Missouri slip up a little bit, they haven't looked bad either. 30 points Arkansas, 30 points Vandy, 30 points A&M. So they're, they're doing what they should be doing. And wh- when I tell you I cannot wait for this game uh, against Auburn, just you know how we talk about, Chris, we talk about when we look at Ken Palm and we're like, man, this is a lot of red. You look at this game as a, a lot, lot of, green. of green. We done anything else? I have nothing further to add. We, we except all kinds of stuff. Except for the fact that you say you're looking forward to this Tennessee Auburn game. What game the Tennessee has the rest of the season is anyone not looking forward to? Home against yeah. Auburn at Alabama. At South Carolina, home against Kentucky. The toughest schedule remaining of any of these contenders here at the top. The Tennessee Vols. But if they were to win all these games, which I think is going to be difficult, but it's you never know. Hey, I mean, seed-wise, my goodness, they're going to boost their resume to where yeah. they may break the net if they win these next four games. So, and even if you lose to Auburn say- Alabama... You know, if they went out, do you think they snagged that one seed from Arizona? Yes. Well, it's definitely possible because these would it's be a lot four to play for. huge, huge wins. So yeah. Even three and one yeah. might do it. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Well, because like Auburn and Alabama are both top seven in the net, right? So it's like, if you just look at it from that standpoint, like those are. And they get South Carolina on the road. So everything's a quad one game. Yep. All of yeah. them. Yeah. So. And that, that is the only thing with their resume that you can really pick much of a fall with. I think they're maybe one game under in quad one. Let me double check this because uh, I've got it right here. And I'm getting the beach ball of death. I mean, they only have anyway. one bad loss, right? That's at A&M. That's, that's it. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, it's the way. Right now in quad one, they're four and five. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So an um, opportunity to go eight and five, and then at that point, you, you know, what are we? Arizona, well, although Arizona is seven and three, I don't know what Arizona's got in front of it, but I think that would be a pretty loud yeah, eight and five. 
I mean, they're they're quad. You can get quad one wins different ways. One of them is beating, you know, whoever's seventy five on their floor, which yeah. is, you know, there's a the point is there's a range of outcomes with those games, and as you dig into them a little bit more, those are all really good quad one wins if if Tennessee can get them. So, I think real quick before we finish, do you just a quick question for you too? Would you say? confidently because i know i think i would do you think how many final four th- teams do you think the sec has because if if you're asking me and that <laughs> other than comparing to other conferences i can see all top five that we have in the power rankings making a run to the final four or making a deep run i don't know how many conferences have that where you have five maybe six teams that are primed for a run yeah, I can. Is that is that up? Oh, is that way out there? No. Am I crazy for saying that? No. Here's what it's I'd just... like. I'd like an all SEC Final Four to boost the business of Southeastern 14. We want all of you guys all in on the Final Four. Give me four SEC teams in the Final Four to put it into the universe, Max. This year, we need it. Let's do it. I'll pick it. I, you think I won't? I'll pick that. No, trust me. I know you will. <laughs> Parting thoughts. Look, we have our fun with power rankings. I mean, again, as Max just said, that's a great way to tie it up. We can pick on some of these teams. We can talk about all this other stuff. But the upside potential with the top however many teams, I think maybe seven, is pretty ridiculous this year. And that's what I said. I've been saying all year that the SEC is as strong as it's been in probably since 2019. Um, that was the year you had four 28-plus win teams. Auburn made the Final Four. Tennessee won 31 games. Kentucky won 30. LSU won the regular season title, 28 wins. So you got a lot of really good teams here. But, again, um, you know we, we do have our fun, but Tennessee and Auburn have been the most complete teams all season. Can Kentucky and Alabama use the offensive upside to get them there? Florida going to spoil the party for everybody. Maybe Max votes them number one next week. We'll find At out. This they rate. have a good week this week. It may be possible. <laughs> so, in Mississippi State, trending in the right direction. So, they're they're feeling really good about themselves. And they got a big game coming up on Tuesday. So, a lot to like about all these SEC teams um, in the top half right now. They're They're all doing some. Really good things uh, overall. So, All right, more basketball content coming. Best way to get it, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Working on some baseball stuff as I speak this morning. Hope to have that out ready this morning and then whatever else comes our way. For Max Barr, for Blake Lovell, I'm Chris Lee. We're Southeastern 14 presented by Online.